Word Balloon is brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying Mainframe Comic Con. We're in the final hour of uh, day one, and I hope you've enjoyed some of the incredible, entertaining panels we've had, and this one will be no exception. John Sutter is here from the Word Balloon Podcast, and uh, really happy uh, to do this uh, panel a look at Insider Art, a tremendous and Insider Art, art excuse me. Boy, I'll tell you, it's, uh, you can tell it's the end of the day. Uh, a great anthology uh, featuring comics, puzzles, games, recipes, a, a true uh, full house experience. And uh, joining us to talk about this, two of the great editors that uh, put this incredible anthology together. Uh, here's Chris Simon. Chris, it's a pleasure to meet you. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. And uh, our returning champion. Uh, she's got the Woo! book. Yes, she did. It's uh, John. Shel, everybody. Good to see you, Shell. I Shel. forgot my name. I've only been on. I, I've only been on your Word Balloon podcast twice. And I was a special guest at John Con, and you forget my name. No, no, you're 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 a co-host at this point, Shell. You know, I have to start sending you money. Don't kid yourself. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Just send absolutely. The in the mail. Absolutely. So uh, we're we're talking about Insider Out, and uh, Shell, you got the props uh, ready for us, which is fantastic. I do. Oh, yes, I do. Product placement shots <laughs> just for you, John. <laughs> it looks great, and. Uh, Really, this again, it's such a tre tremendous book because uh, you've all uh, curated this incredible collection of great uh, cartoonists, great writers, and uh, they really went to town. And, and it's appropriate that uh, this was put together. I mean, Shell, was the inspiration because of COVID? I mean, was it because of that? Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. It was mostly because of COVID. And a couple months back, I realized we were going to go through the same general malaise and vitriol that we all experienced when we survived the outcome of the 2016 presidential election. And so I looked around on Twitter and social media and I saw people just grumbling and shouting and I just knew we had to come together once again. And where else but put all of our amazing energy and emotions into a comic book? and especially in an anthology. And so, yeah, I reached out to Jen King, who was our retailer liaison, and seven other editors, including Chris Simon, who were fearless enough to take me up on the offer. It was basically, I came up with the idea of an art house, and within this house, there were eight rooms, and each editor was asked to edit her own room, and that meant that there were very few rules just go out, bring in the goods, find the most amazing writers and artists and colorists and letterers and have at it and bring us the best in comics, prose, single illustration, games, and of course, cats. Lots of cats. Absolutely. Yes. So Chris, which room were you in charge of? I'm in charge of the kitchen. So ah. yeah, which I volunteer for. I know there was uh, some editors who kind of had to pick what was left, but when Shelly reached out, I immediately snatched up kitchen so that I could share all of my awesome recipes and gather in all the people I knew who love to cook and do crafts in the kitchen and stuff and, and make it something really special. I was super excited uh, to well. do that. Better Chris than me in the kitchen because I'm a disaster. <laughs> really? John 
What about you, John? Can I'm you- a killer in there. You know, I, I come from restaurant people. I'm a Greek guy. So uh, that was kind of part of the deal. You had to learn how to cook. And uh, dad had us in the kitchen at uh, at 12 years old. So, uh, no, I'm all right, actually. But it's great, uh, Chris. I actually have pages ready. I'll, uh, I'll uh, share the screen here in just yeah. a second and uh, share some of the great art that we've got uh, from the kitchen specifically. Let me see. There it is. And so I'm going to share. There we go. So I don't know if you, Alec, if you want to isolate me, if you haven't already. And we've got uh, recipes for egg pasta Mm -hmm. and how to make a quiche. Outstanding. That's great. And that's uh, Takio uh, Akiyama. Yes. Yeah, she's great. She did several pages in there. Um, and those are her her characters that are actually based on her band. She has a real life band, and so oh, that's great. Super yeah, super cute. And uh, Kitchen Witch, that's awesome. And that Janet Lee is that Janet Lee who uh, did that great book with um, with uh, oh damn it, Jim McCann, right? Isn't that Janet Lee or no? I don't know. Is that the same one, Shelley? You know, yeah, you I was going to say it may be a different Janet Lee. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have no, I, I'm not sure. This is Janet K. Lee in this story. Which is amazing is by Gilly. Gilly. Yeah. And of course you can see we have cats all over the place. In yes. fact, you can yep. even do your own counting game because there are so many cats <laughs> on every, each and every page. John, you're great. flipping through quickly. What I'm we, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. We we want we're hoping to go through um, and just point out some of the really cool features. Do you want and me to start at the top again, uh, Shell? Let's start at the top. Okay, the, beautiful cover, of course. So, yeah, let me talk to you a little bit about the cover. So, we have this tremendous logo by Sophie Dodgson, who you may or may not know has been taking the comic industry by storm. She is the colorist on Bitter Root, which is a book that just won the best continuing series Eisner this year. And Sophie is such an integral team member. Sanford Green brought her into Bitter Root. And as soon as uh, I put my eyes on her glorious pages, I knew we had to pull her away and get her very involved in insider art. So not only is she the editor of The Craft Room, which is a lot of fun, she designed the logo and she also designed and put together the cover. So what you're seeing is this beautiful montage of choice panels from didn't she also do the website she did our website right she did she also did our website and john before we go any further i do want to hold up the book because while we have this available on gumroad it's i want people to understand that insider art was a labor of love everyone who contributed and there were 142 people they donated their time and all proceeds from insider art available digitally on gumroad will support female and non-binary comic book retailers. So when you go to Gumroad, it's going to say suggested donation of $10, pay whatever you'd like, and this is what you get. It's hard to like understand the scope, which yeah. is why I actually put together just a few copies like you see here. But mm-hmm. it was it was necessary. We wanted a product shop because it's very easy to miscalculate what you're getting for your money when you're buying something digitally. And this is just chock full of the goods. Agreed. Absolutely. And again, uh, focusing on uh, various uh, rooms inside the the Insider Out house. And uh, here, I'm going to go back to scrolling now. And uh, let's see here. This first story is by Sarah Gordon, Idle Hands. Yes, it is, in fact. And this room, the bedroom, which we we should stress right now, it's an all-ages compendium. So this is a bedroom of fun and games. Nothing fishy, John. Don't even don't even go there. I won't this go is there. An all ages compendium. So Chrissy <laughs> Williams, who is not only a terrific editor, but she's also a poet. She not only edited this section and curated it beautifully with so many of rising star and superb British artists, I might add. Um, one of the things that I love about the book is that the outreach was tremendous. I mean, this is really a cross section of the best of the artists and writers across the globe. So I was saying to people, if you want to impress your boss and you're a comic book assistant editor or associate editor, 
this is it. This is how you do it in one fell swoop, $10. I mean, that's the price of like a cappuccino. Come on, sure. be real. And you're helping support an overlooked demographic. As, as you guys know, when COVID hit, we saw a lot of people doing kind things to raise money for others. And that's great. But I didn't see anything that was specifically devoted to female and non-binary comic book retailers. So I knew we had to come together and do it. And you know, the people, I wanna take this moment to thank all 142 people who were behind the scenes, who gave us their time and delivered in under three months, which is almost impossible. Yeah. Right? You, you give this to a corporate suit and it would take them two years. And I, and I would know. Yeah, suit. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of suit where's your hat yeah i know buddy i'm like i, I am i'm like the ed, i'm like the juggler that's spinning plates uh, on ed sullivan seriously it was a crazy day so i'm sorry i'm gonna have to take a point off your rating already i, I understand i understand John, it's 97 degrees in los angeles right now now and i'm prepared I've got my pin and you forgot your hat. I, buddy, I, and, and my insider art pin. I, I know I suck. I'm, I'm always in, if there's an added, if there's a doghouse in the insider outhouse, I would be in it. And the you cats are, would be yelling at me. And you are, and you are, and we might not let you out, but we better continue because we know we're going to have to take 45 minutes here. Okay. <laughs> what we're looking at, um, if you scroll back just for a minute, I wanted to point out this amazing pro story by yeah. Angela Cleland and artist Stephanie Hans, who you all might know from Kieran Gillen's book, Die, where Stephanie is also the co-creator. Amazing comic book. What we wanted to do with Insider Art was create a compendium that pretty much had everything. I mean, of course it has comics, but it also has some other features that you're not used to seeing in comic books, graphic novels, or even comics magazines. So as we scroll through, I think we'll point those things out because I think you're going to really love it, John. I absolutely. I already have loved it. Absolutely. And uh, now we're in the basement, just like uh, the B-52s. I was going to say, all right, you just got yourself back up to a, a, a one point rating. You're out of the doghouse for the next minute. I know who I'm talking to. Absolutely. Right? Exactly. Um, this is a tr tremendous piece of artwork. Basically, the basement was co-edited by our two ingenue editors, Elizabeth Bree and Megan Brown. And I worked with both of these talented women when I was at IDW uh, working on Black Crown. And they were quick to jump in and they said, hey, we've got a day job, but we can do it together. And so we said, have at it. And they brought in such cool people to work in their chapter and their section. So this is a piece of art by Kayla Klein and the best thing of all is this is just the chapter heading of the piece. So you've got a cat, a bit trepidatious, <laughs> walking down the stairs. Yep. The exit out of this chapter, which we don't see here, but I'm but you're gonna have to trust me on it. Okay. It's the cat racing back up the stairs because the cat is scared shitless. So. Well, sure. Look at all this creepy stuff under the stairs. I used to, my aunt and uncle had a basement like this. I totally understand this. Now, did you hide down there or were you relegated down there? Both. I, I, uh, <laughs> it was great. It was great for hide and seek, but also, uh, I, as a small kid, he used to scare the hell out of me if the lights were out because yeah, I only knew what kind of creatures much uh, like depicted here were uh, roaming around this basement. So I understand. I get it. Poor cat. Jesus. Hey, actually, while we're scrolling through, let me just say that Elizabeth and Megan are the editors who work on the Glow comic for IDW. Awesome. They actually invited their writers, who I'm sure you know as the great actresses from the show, and they actually wrote a story um, that was called Glow in the Dark, <laughs> which was apt, of course. So Amy Garcia and AJ Mendez did a terrific job. So there's stories in here too. But what we have here is a story actually that's by Sam Maggs, Sweeney Boo, and Haley Rose Lyon about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> you I'm right, have, I see. right, you can't have a compendium that's meant for all ages to support female and non-binary comic book retailers without a D&D &D salute. <laughs> yeah. That's no, that's gorgeous, man. Absolutely. Hilarious. 
So very cool. And then uh, now another story, uh, chop till you drop. And, you know, I can relate to this because uh, I, although I'm due for another haircut, uh, my bangs were growing past my nose and I had to do this exact move as we see in the first panel in uh, chop till you drop. Well, this is actually part of the bathroom section. And mm -hmm. again, I can't tell a lie. I have a terrible poker face, but when Nicole Booth signed on to work with us, she, she was an editor of Marvel many years ago, and she was excited to get back in the editing game. She came in at the tail end, so we say she drew the last straw because most of us really wanted to avoid the bathroom for all the obvious reasons. <laughs> and there was this running joke among editors that if left in the wrong hands, as in someone who is neither female nor non-binary, this section would be all fart jokes. And John, I dare you to deny that. I, I'm waving to the camera. Absolutely, Shell. I You're right. That would have been my first reflex, absolutely. But Nicole, actually, <laughs> she she told me that she was a little disappointed at first, but she certainly turned it around. And I think this is one of the best sections. She turned it into a place to go for relaxation and rejuvenation. So what you're seeing here is something that, Chris, you were saying everybody has been faced with this at some point. Absolutely. Right? Everybody's had to cut their hair in the bathroom during this quarantine. So this yes. is very relatable. <laughs> and Even and guys. It's, it's yep. by MJ Kremer, who's a great writer, and Lindsay J. Bryan, who is a terrific illustrator. She also illustrates greeting cards. Um, and I just want to say, give her a shout out because she did such a great job on this story and has just been like so many of the other young, talented women who donated their time and then also help us promote I think the promoting part is critical to continuing to raise money. When we started this project, we knew we wanted to do a digital compendium because at the time we weren't even sure if printers were gonna be up and running. Absolutely. In the summer. So we were pretty sure we wanted to do it digitally, but we wanted to make the whole project a three prong initiative. So in addition to the Gumroad digital anthology, we had an eBay auction, which is still ongoing through Jen King's Facebook comic book shopping network. And I want to shout out to them as well and to all the wonderful people who donated some, just not only things from like the, their own archives. I mean, I did a little excavation of my garage and found a few Sandman statues that didn't need to live in Los Angeles anymore. So we had people donate all kinds of things. And I had some signed art prints from the Hey Amateur Project. So major shout out to Jen and all the people that helped us. We raised a few thousand dollars just from that eBay auction. And of course, we have a spoon flower print that's going to be going up mm -hmm. on their site very, very soon. The hell's a spoon flower print? Help me out, buddy. There you go. Oh, can we get a close up of that, uh, Alec? We can. We Lovely. Shall. Fantastic. Yeah. There's like yeah. several. Here's the cool thing about oh, and uh, and Chris has one too. Let's uh, let's zoom she in does. on Chris. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. That's so great. Chris was actually making some coasters. Chris, is I that one your, is that a large coaster for your extra large cocktail? It is. It is for a large mug. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. There we mug go. Of tea. There we go. <laughs> one of the great things about insider art, and and this is tricky. And again bad poker face. I only speak truths and half truths to you, John. But at the start of this project, I knew there would be people who were not pencils down. There were a lot of people scrambling for work. There were a lot of artists and writers who were way too busy. So I came up with this approach called Just One Cat. Now, as a Cure fan, you're going to tell me that was a cross between Just One Kiss and the Love Cats. I I'm wouldn't have gotten right. that. I, I have, must <laughs> confess. Negative two points for John. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. And basically, I, I, would, I would say to people, we'd love for you to donate. Please pitch us a story. If you don't have time, how about sending us just one cat? And so we would, we would have people who were incredibly generous, and they would just draw a cat on a four-by-four four piece of, of board. And not only do we run the cats within the book, but we also got to auction many of them off on Jen's Facebook comic shopping network site. And Amazing. I'm, I'm looking around because Chris and I actually 
almost got into a tussle over one cat in particular. True. Mine, mine jumped to the floor. So Chris, is yours handy? It is. Oh, let's zoom in on uh, Chris for a second. You see so, that? Beautiful. A wonderful British artist named Jade Perkin not only worked on a, a four page story for Chris, I think. Yeah. Yes. About pickling. Wow. Yeah. Is, so John, you know, when you want to impress your relatives and prove to them that you can still cook, <laughs> we've got a pickling recipe for you. But I Jade, like it. Jade mm -hmm. was also kind enough to, to send us not one, but two cats, which was a really good thing because that particular cat, everyone knew it was my favorite, but Chris didn't care. And she made it clear to everybody in the group she was going to bid on that cat anyway. So then I came back and I said, Chris, this cat is going to be on my introduction. So this cat needs to come home, needs to be a part of my house. <laughs> and then Chris replied, I don't care. Too bad for you. I'm bidding on the cat. But sure enough, there were two. So we both won. Oh, very nice. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Good salute. There was no blood loss between us seriously shell you need a podcast buddy i swear to god you 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 kill me every time you're on no, that's what that's what you're for I it's my well it's good then we'll make this a monthly ritual there you go we've we did we pretty much did june july and august shell so yeah there you go we did we had a lot of fun with china clugston flores too and we've got an illustration of uh, her uh, garage band history that uh we'll, we'll get to but tell us about this uh beautiful seaside thing that doesn't seem to be inside the house i'm confused well, it may not be inside the house per se, but it's a magical realist piece that's inspired by the bathroom. Again, Nicole Boos, five stars. She actually <laughs> takes the trophy. This is a piece that I love to pieces. It's um, about the writer, Stephanie Nina. I'm going to say this correctly, Stephanie. If I mispronounce it, I apologize. Pizzerillos. She's a wonderful writer she's a prose writer she's been doing comics for the past few years and she actually submitted this piece about her grandmother's bathroom and how whenever she went to her grandmother's bathroom there were so many trinkets and so many things that inspired her time at the beach and one of the other things not that it i want this to be all about me but i was designing quite a few of the prose stories and this piece really caught my eye and I really felt it was worthy of a very New Yorker-esque layout. So it was sure. very, very um, clean and bold and graphic. And I think so beautifully rendered by Ashley Riblet, who's a wonderful painter. So this is just another one of the features that you'll find in the bathroom section. And talk about chill at the beach, John. <laughs> when was the last time you chilled at the beach? I'm wait Honestly, Shell, I'm waiting for them to reopen because... I would love to swim and I, I, I don't trust my, my gym to go back to the gym because Illinois keeps uh, surging back up after flattening for a week or so. Yeah. So I want them to reopen the beaches and not only am I ready uh, with my bathing suit, but also I, I purchased a wetsuit. So uh, yes, so imagine a portly, uh, a portly, why am I blanking on his name? Or a portly Keanu Reeves in point blank, as opposed to a hey. slick surfing looking guy. But uh, yeah, only man. If, only if you wear the hat. We need. We need. Oh, I got the. Oh, I got the cowl. Need, Absolutely. We need the scuba mask, the hat, and the insider art pin. <laughs> or you're back in the doghouse. Oh, you're back in the doghouse anyway. <laughs> I know. No, I'm stuck there. I understand. I totally understand. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, then, Chris, we got uh, we got again these uh, wonderful recipes for. Uh, yeah. Egg pasta and quiche. That's great. What other recipe? And we said pickling, obviously. Yeah, there's pickling in there. There's also, uh, there's how to do a coffee press. There's, oh, great. Yeah, th there's a ton of recipes in there that are really cool. And this one is how to make bread, actually, in case that wasn't clear. Um, while great. meditating. It's like a meditational thing. So That's great. I yeah. uh, Chris got in the... Go ahead, Michelle. Go ahead, Shell. No, I just wanted to say Chris got in a lot of trouble with her dad. <laughs> Chris, Chris revealed the secret family recipe for apple cider pie. It's my fault, oh, no. but she's still going to have to take the blame. Wow. Excellent. I didn't really get in trouble. It was more of a, a mock anger. <laughs> That's not what your dad told me. <laughs> oh, my God. 
you're, uh, when there, you go home, when you when you go home to your high school bedroom, it is going to be now like a fisherman's workshop. Oh, I'm afraid that ship has sailed. It's already an awful. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was uh, neglecting uh, comments here, everybody. Um, comics, oh, no. Mrs. Plain, gotta love Shelly Bond. Next time, we need a cat's in clash coat clothing. Absolutely. I like that. I like your style, commenter. Comics, Mrs. Mix, Plain. Mix explained. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> the Englishman in San Diego, insider art, one of the best things to come out this entire blank situation. And such a talented lineup. Completely agree. Uh, Shell, as always, you, you, and then Chris, you as well, you guys curated an incredible lineup of, uh, of people to uh, to contribute to this book, and some of my favorite people in comics are represented in Insider Art. So, and Shelly, but you know, and well, <laughs> the UK powerhouse that is Lucy Sullivan and Carter's. Oh, you're freezing a little bit, Shell. Always follows me. What's up? You were freezing a little bit. I don't know your reception. We weren't getting uh, every word. Oh, but are you, you're, you're giving praise to uh, the oh. Englishman in San Diego, Andy? Yes, I'm giving praise to, to Leonard, who is the Englishman in San Diego, and Taylor from Broken Frontier, who wears a hat like nobody's business for you when you decide to wear a hat. <laughs> I gotta get ahead of like and uh like just... came in and they really they 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 recommended such terrific people from the small press arena in the UK, which is bustling and booming, I might add. That's awesome. Don't sleep on that, John. Don't no. sleep on that. Go to Bro no. Broken Frontier. You gotta check out the today was small press day. You have, have to see. The tremendous coming out of there, um, young and old. It's not just like you know the kids out of art school. Across sure, the but I'm seeing like people really level up at fifty. Sounds good. That's great. Six. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, you're really, uh, Shell. You might want to leave and come back as far as re-signing on okay. because uh, you're freezing a lot. Okay. So yeah, if you Sorry. would, and um, no worries, of course. Hey, look, buddy, I mean, please, it's all good. Yeah, well, you know, Chris and I, Chris and I will hold court until then. We can so, handle it. So, how do you bond with uh, with Shell Beyond Comics, uh, Chris? What what common interest to you? Uh, oh, with this is actually how I met Shelley, and you know, we'd met previously before, but you know, we didn't keep in touch or anything. Um, and this project, we actually we actually bonded on it. No pun intended. <laughs> So we're working on some other stuff um, aside from insider art. And so, yeah, uh, we, we work really well together. Yeah, we've it, been having a good time. It's really, honestly, and as I've gotten to know Shell over the last couple of years and talking to other creators about her and stuff, I, I was just talking, and again, not to name drop, but Ed Brubaker and I did an interview earlier this week. And um, he's like, you know, Shelly is the one that had noticed my uh, low life book, his indie, indie comic back in the day. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, so you know, really, uh, Sh Shelley was the one that got Ed into Vertigo and kind of helped uh, start his uh, mainstream career. I is just spectacular. She she's something else. I mean, I'll tell you, like I admired her before I met her, and I was absolutely thrilled when I finally did get a chance. And she seems so surprised, you know. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, you've done all this amazing stuff. And she was like, what, really? Like it's just <laughs> that's just who she is. You know, but um, yeah, she's responsible for such a, a ton of people coming up in the industry. You know, it's it's just been fantastic. And I've been working with her on another project and um, she just manages to snag out these people, you know, which I would normally just kind of pass by, but you know, she sees something in them and, and you know, and then she grooms them and she helps them to become better. You know, she's a, a great mentor. I've been learning so much from her. So I'm not surprised. And, you know, uh, Black Crown, her imprint at IDW was really an ambitious thing. And I'm sorry that it didn't get more time because, uh, yeah. God, when she when she put um, people like um, and I, I think it was uh, Gabriel Hernandez and um, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Teeny Howard on, uh, yeah. you know, Assassinistas, I thought was a terrific book. 
that cracked me up. And and really, again, going going back to her vertigo days as well. All those, I, earlier I was uh, doing a panel with Axel Alonso, and uh, I'm friends with Will Dennis. All the great Vertigo editors, honestly, and certainly Karen Berger and Joan Hilty come to mind as well. Mm -hmm. uh, great tastemakers. Yes. And that's, that's, a, that's a serious trait in Shell that I really uh, appreciate. And yes, yeah, she's just got that eye. And it, you know, forever, DC is very corporate with their editors. Mm -hmm. And they don't want editors to like reveal stories. So they, they, they really kind of keep them at arm's length from the press. And it used to drive me crazy. And Will is like the first one that I really bonded with. And I'm like, there's gonna be a day when you're not working for Vertigo. And when that day comes, I expect a lot of stories. And he laughed about it. And and Shelly was the same thing. Here she's back. So <laughs> all we were saying, Shell, were vicious things about you. Of course you were. <laughs> of course. I expect no less from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly, Shell. I was saying that uh, you're, you're – and, and, and again, you continue to do it. And Chris was not giving us details but teasing that there's an upcoming project that the two of you are working on. But really, I was talking to Axel earlier today on a panel and a Brubaker uh, earlier this week. And, um, you know, uh, he reminded me that uh, you're the one that saw Low Life and uh, said this guy should be at Vertigo. I'm Atta a girl. comics yeah, reader. Did, right? What can I say? You, you, you know, you can't stop me from reading comics. You just can't. You can try. Not what were you? What, what when when uh, when you when you were on John Con a couple of weeks ago when you were talking about being was it a campfire girl is that what you were? What? When you were talking about being a camp and uh, come on. Oh 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 oh! <laughs> You're gonna take me back there. You're gonna take me back to camp when <laughs> I was the littlest camper. You're John, the littlest camper, absolutely. John, I love that. You, That's you, fantastic. You go back there. <laughs> no. to, John, I'm gonna have to ask you once again why you haven't delivered with Brian Ferry. I, <laughs> and you're going to have to tell Chris this story. It, it would you be my set and, yourself up for it. And the mainframe Comic Con audience, absolutely. Um, for years, Chris, I worked for ten years at a rock station in Chicago, and it was the alternative rock station, and uh, <laughs> also also at the sports station in town. <laughs> one night, I was producing a sports show, and there was a knock it's at the back. Actually, not that funny, Chris. I'm not sure. Is there someone behind John? Making a face, it's not that it, it, you're it, it's it's not that funny, but it's an important story. Sorry, go on, John. Oh, no worries, all good. I, I want to make sure there wasn't an intruder or anything. About. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was one night I was producing a sports show and there was a knock at our back door during a commercial so I could answer the door. And I opened the door, and lo and behold, the Cary Grant of rock and roll from, from Roxy Music, Brian Ferry, is at it's the funny. door. Oh, and, yeah. just, just imagining it for the fourth time. <laughs> Shell loves that story. So yeah. I love that story. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Really I, <laughs> I, I only love that story because every time John is live with another guest, I'll write in a question and I'll say, John, did you give Brian Ferry my digits yet? <laughs> if he'll only. say no. If he only. Won't, he won't even lie about it. He just says, no, I did nope. not. Chips that pass in the night. What can I say? I'm sorry. It was like, as I always make the comparison, Chris, it was like living in a monkey's episode because really like Elvis Costello would come in studio and play a song and Lyle Lovett and uh, Robbie Robertson of the band and uh, all these, all these incredible people. And maybe that's our cue to us. Uh, I mean, we should, uh, do you want to go in order to Should we continue? Sure. In there? Let's so we've got it. imagination here by Miriam Bloom. Right. Now this is the attic section. Ooh. Creepy attic. Now, Mariah Huner McCourt was supposed to be here today and unfortunately couldn't make it, but she did a great job curating the attic. As you can see, there's some really spooky stuff. Um, and not only were there a number of great short stories, one of the coolest things Mariah did, which we didn't represent here, but if you, if you pick up insider art, mm -hmm. you will love this. She did a progression of color where she started her section in black and white and she slowly added hues so that by the time we get to the section you're looking at, it's in full color, which I thought was a terrific way to show a crescendo because it was also halfway through the book. Ooh. And we don't like books that sag in the middle, John. So she, she came up with this great idea and I think it really helps elevate just the attention span because this is the kind of book that you can enjoy in one sitting or you can enjoy over a summer going back to camp 
You know, I always, when I, when I was the littlest camper in 1974 at Camp Pymere, I discovered David Bowie. Chris, this is another story that John Kahn fans and also <laughs> Word Balloon fans know well, but that's where I discovered David Bowie. 1974, the camp counselors were putting their makeup on and Rebel Rebel was on the radio. So that explains everything. That's the story, John. He's he's silently laughing. It's his favorite story about me. Truly. Forget the Sandman, forget Fables, forget Brew Baker. It's Camp Pymere, the little And Rebel camp. Rebel. Yeah. Tap dancing on the stage. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm not going back there anymore, John. That was it. Until you deliver with Brian Ferry, there's no more. All right, I'll do my best. I, you know, Jesus. But this, uh, but this attic section is great, you know. And like, like I said, this is the kind of book that you can read in dribs and drabs. There are two-page stories. There are eight-page stories. There's something for everyone. And this prose story by Jody Hauser is terrific. Yes. It takes you right into her head and her past with her grandfather and her attic. And I want to give a shout out to Megan Hutchison who is one of my favorite people in comics. She's my goth sister. And she did this great cat, which I just want to say thanks again, Megan, you rock. And her cat also actually, I think was the top seller in the auction. I have no idea who ended up buying it, but there was a bidding war. And yeah. I think it went for like almost a grand. Wow. Is, I could be lying about that. I'm going to just say, I think it went for like something like that. But I think it's a, too. I recall seeing it. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful piece of art. Thank you to the person who actually won the eBay auction. Thank you, Megan, for donating and for being such a badass artist. You're here. And mm -hmm. Megan and I, sisters, LA sisters, come back home. It's really hot and sweaty here, and you would be very uncomfortable like the rest of us. <laughs> so now, where are we? Mexican papel. We are in the craft room. Ah. Yeah. The great Sophie Dodgson was able to somehow convince, I think maybe 25 people. Some of these are one pagers. She really had a huge turnout of people. Give us the goods. Um, on the left of your screen, you have an artist who I think is gonna take over comics. She is such a powerhouse. Her name is Anna Pachalski. She goes by A.D. Pachalski. Not only is she an inventive storyteller, she is an exquisite painter. And she actually has a website where you can find Russian dolls that she paints. Oh, wow. So she had a collection of Alice in Wonderland uh, dolls. And she also had a beautiful set of different rabbits, which I actually purchased for my stepmother-in-law. So when I tell you we have talented artists, Many are cartoonists, some are zine makers and cartoonists, some are fine artists or painters. As you see here, we have Lauren Hole, who teaches you how to make your own eight page zine. Yes. Which I am so happy zines are back. I mean, I loved zines back in the 70s. Chris is, is a bit younger than us, but John, did you make your own zines in the 70s? I did not make my own zines, but I certainly admired them. And uh, much like you, I mean, I am glad they're back. And one of the great shows in Chicago that unfortunately, of course, uh, isn't happening this year is Cake in uh, that always happens in June. And that's yeah. a terrific zine show and a great uh, breaking through artist show. So I do love going there. And I just kind of quietly slip through the aisles and uh, check out the new people and what they're doing. It's great. I think we need to do uh, John Con zine next year. <laughs> What do you think? Do you think yeah, we can get people in. together? Yeah. Well, this is great because you do. You take a you take one piece of paper and you show how to fold it and the right uh, pages, uh, the right page count and everything to be able to make this and and you know have oh, your yeah. story make sense and everything. So that's great. Oh no! Listen, two hundred seventy pages. You are going to be a pro at so many things, John. After you make <laughs> through this collection, even. You know, scrolling up next, this this is one of my favorite pieces. It's by Georgie Berriman. And not only does Georgie have an inventive style here, I just, I love their cartooning. <laughs> I love the fact that you can just print this out and, and color. It'll be okay. <laughs> Let's face it, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, like we didn't know what the hell was going on and where we'd be yeah. in three months. But yeah. 
John, the, there's some good news on the horizon, and I'll let Chris, in, in, in case she already spilled the news, we're really working hard to try to make Insider Art a print edition. That's yeah. excellent. Mm -hmm. This is a, even before the pandemic, this to me feels like a rainy day book. Oh, and yeah. And really, you know, when, when kids are stuck in the house, and there's so many great crafts and, and really fun things to do with with yeah. the kid. So I think that's, yeah, I, I hope I hope so. I mean, it's it's great. It looks fantastic on your tablet, but I, but it would be great. And obviously teasing us with the spiral edition that you were holding up earlier, Shell, I think that's a great idea. And like you said, rainy day activities. Also, when, ki when, when kids are sick, to have a chapter you can go through. I mean, it makes being yeah. sick and staying at home that much easier, right? Or you can take it to camp, John. And again, yes, indeed, you would know. You would know. I would know. Take your tap <laughs> shoes and your insider art to camp and you're set for the summer, even if they pick on you. And sometimes they do. Oh, Michelle, you are, are no, I don't believe that. Honestly, uh, your stature. Uh, the memoir. You know, read, you're, read you're, the you're, memoir. You'll see. You're flinty, pal. You are like, <laughs> I wouldn't mess with you. You'd scare the hell out of me. <laughs> so I was asking Chris how she bonded with you. And truly in our conversations, as you well know, but the audience doesn't, that, uh, we both worked at our college radio stations. And uh, yeah, I, so I'm like, yeah, we would have been friends. Shelly and I would have been friends, as much uh, as we pick on each other. Mm. Maybe not, exactly. Actually, I would not be cool enough to hang with Shelly. I don't know the hat. Honest. You blew it today with the dress code. Sorry. I understand. But our but our mutual love for Paul Weller, come on. Yeah, but you know where, I, with Paul Weller, I, I, go, I go to 97. I don't follow you into the into the 21st century with Paul Weller, but that's a, that's going to be a lightning round for another time. Indeed, or so, or so you keep promising me. It would be a shell. That'll be our September conversation. I have I no hope. doubt. Chris, so here, absolutely. And Chris I, I, I understand. Chris has to understand that John keeps threatening to do a lightning round of Paul Weller, starting with the Jam and the Style Council and the Paul Weller experience, his solo work. John, well, I think. I know that's your that is your challenge, Shell. I come back with I would be more comfortable doing one hit wonders of of the new wave of the generation. But, so. but why be comfortable, John? <laughs> why be comfortable? Because I don't want to say I don't know. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, because I, I know a good share of, of, of jam and, and style council songs in particular. You are an encyclopedia of knowledge about comics, film, movies, television. Oh. Garage rock. Indeed. And that's why I, I stop at this one, because this is where you, China, and I really bonded. And I do. I am I, I was a I was a music DJ for several years of my radio career before switching to talk and sports. And uh and I'm a massive oldies fan. And the history of garage rock, uh, rock going back to the beginnings of rock and roll and and especially again, I worked at an oldie station, so I would play question mark in the Mysterians or the Swinging Medallions or uh, the Knickerbockers, one of those Beatles knockoff bands that did a song called Lies. You know, you know it if you heard it on an oldie station. But that's kind of what this uh, great poster is, which is uh, a great timeline. And uh, look at the, the history of garage rock. Absolutely. And and another massive shout out to China Cludston Flores, who is also a powerhouse cartoonist. And I know her Blue Monday work is going to be reissued again soon. She is just yep. one of the best. And it's been a blast working with her. She not only generously donated her time to putting this print together. I mean, John, do you have it on your wall yet? We, we make No, I have to get it framed. I mean, you know, wonderful. COVID and all, but I but it is uh, it's, sitting it's, waiting for a it's frame. Huge. It's huge. It's, it's, it's gorgeous. It, as as John's dementia kicks in, he'll have this and he'll hold on. I <laughs> can continue late. to win those lightning rounds on Jeopardy. But China not only did this wonderful two page spread, she also did a terrific cat, which I'm going to hold up because the cat really was our house cat. Mm -hmm. It's a classic tuxedo cat. And I decided yeah, get to out of this and to yeah, there we go. Thank you. Cat on the title page. Bring a little bit. There she is. Okay. There we go. Can yep. we see? Is that yep. good? Yep. So basically, China's cat led the pack. Mm -hmm. And lots of the other artists would sneak in shots of the house cat into their stories, which is why we have a challenge to anyone who's willing to count the cats. We <laughs> want to know how many there are. There are differing numbers. So 
it, it would be a lot of fun if people went to our website at insiderart.net. Let us know what they think and how many cats they've counted. You'll die when you check out this poster and see all the different bands that are mentioned. And then I love this part at the bottom as well. If you want your own garage band, you're going to need musicians, <laughs> oh, yeah. box, your bandmate's garage, of course, an amplifier, natty hairdo, and fat <laughs> hair. And then, John, if I'm not mistaken, you had asked me at the in the conversation we had with China, you had asked if I could make you a pair of those boots that says that say Fab. On if you if you would, I'd be I would be I would be I'm thrilled still, to wear them, and I'm I would show you. A picture on them. All right, there you go. I'm a, li I'm a little busy this summer. I've had to wash my hair a few times, but as soon as they're ready, I might even put taps on the bottom of them so you can tap dance in them. Outstanding. Fantastic. Have yeah, you ever heard? I, it was the movie Kinky Boots, <laughs> but did you ever hear that song that Patrick McNee kind of speaks? And I think it was made during the the old Avengers 60s uh, TV show about the spies, not the uh, superheroes. You would, you would think, but the answer is negative. Really? Shocking. Sorry. Well, Philip was cracking me up. You're a fine husband when... We, you were you were ratting about on his on his music choices, but what you call folk music, it's like that's oh, not music. Come we, on, you, hey, we can't go there. We can't bring Philip into this right now. It's just not fair. <laughs> Philip's awesome. He was cracking me up during John Cut. It was, it was great, funny, right? For a shy guy, he's really funny. <laughs> Absolutely, good Actually, lord. Actually, Chris, if you you want to talk a little bit about the garage section, yeah, please, Chris. I mean, it's your section, Shelly. I, I know, but I've been doing, I've been talking too much and I want, I want to hear <laughs> what you sorry, Chris, the yeah. garage section. We're all the way at the end. Actually, no, the, the garage section is, is pretty special because um, you actually have a professional skateboarder, right? That, that did some well, story. Yes. It, in addition to a professional, two professional skateboarders, Ooh. there's also, there, we, we have real musicians who contributed as well. Yes. But I'll talk about the professional skateboarders first. We have Cindy Whitehead, who some of you may know as just a powerhouse social disruptor. One of the few women who was inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. And she had her introduction by Joan Jett, which I still think is the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. But she was like a, a major skateboarder and one of the first female skateboarders to have a spread in like, a skateboarding magazine. I can't remember if it's Thrasher, but one of the really popular magazines back in the 70s. Chris, you were too young, but John and I were like trying really hard to skateboard in our neighborhoods. And I had like, you know, one of those big wooden boards with like the tiny silver wheels that like, you know, they would, wouldn't even go over the cracks. You would just fall off. Oh, yeah. And, and then the plastic penny boards I tried. I tried. But Cindy is the real deal. She wrote a story for uh, another skateboarder to illustrate. And this is so cool. A young, a young girl who is 12, I should say a young woman who's 12, um, named Lola the Illustrator, is not only one of the skateboarders for Cindy's collective called Girl is Not a Four-Letter Word, she's also one of the artists, a graffiti artist for the Bushwick Collective. Wow. So, when you look at her art and I tell you she's 12, you can't believe your eyes. She is really, I mean, like, I think the next Keith Haring of New York, she is just so good and so smart and so cool and professional. I mean, everybody on this book delivered in a timely fashion, but Lola, she blew everyone away. She not only did her story in record time, and it was, I think, four pages. It was a long one. Is it in? Is it in the collection of pages you gave me, Shell, or no? It, it's not in the no. the PDF I gave you, but I'm yeah. going to actually pull up a, yeah. a, okay. a a bit of it because it's oh, just it's just out. so good. You have to see it. Yeah, we really want to see it now that you've talked about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Here it is. How's that? Wow. Good Lord. She's a, right? she's a great artist. She's a great artist. I mean. Fantastic. And, and to be that good at, at 12, you can just only imagine how she's going to be at 16. Exactly. <laughs> she's curious about it and she's a doll she's a terrific person so I, I it's the second time i've worked with her and i just i can't wait to work with her again and to kind of follow her career path shell is you know the the people like jim shooter that started at like 13 and writing right. great comic books and and uh 
Yeah. Jerry Conway was really young when he started. So it's about time we had a woman that, uh, right? that, that started when she, absolutely. So that's great. I look forward to uh, the evolution of her work. That's wonderful. Yeah, she's she's terrific. Why? Definitely keep an eye on her. Um, Outstanding. The other, the other team I wanted to mention is we have the bass player of the band The Wedding Present, who is not only a terrific writer, but she teaches yoga. Talk about multifaceted. Her name is Terry DeCastro, and she did this wonderful page um, on how to write industrial music um, and record it in your garage. And it's a wonderful one pager uh, illustrated by Carrie McNinch, who she brought in, whose work I didn't know, but it's terrific. So um, one of the best things about this book is seeing what everyone else brought in, because I always play favorites and it gave me the opportunity to work with some of my other favorites in comics. I'm going to show you this game board. Yes, so, I love the game board. Yes. Right? So I reached out to Vita Ayala, who is also one of my favorite writers in comics today. And she's just a terrific person. They're just a terrific person. And yes. they pitched me a game board. And I thought, that's amazing. We didn't have something like that. And to make it legit, you can go to our website, you can download the board and also the pieces. Now the board was drawn by Sally Canarino, who is also a wonderful artist who's based in New Jersey. She's also a part Philly girl. We have a lot in common. She lived in Philadelphia like I did for a while. Yeah. And the colorist on this is Gab Contreras who contributed quite a few coloring yeah. um, pages in the book. So thank you to Gab for not just doing one project but doing multiple projects that really meant a lot. Were you on a uh, show uh, on John Con when, when Vita was on? Cause she I was, was on, I was going to say, I didn't think the two of you were on at the same, pardon me, the, that all of you were on at the, at the same time, but uh, they're great. And uh, yeah. I look forward to a conversation with them uh, uh, in a, in a few weeks or so, but uh, no terrific stories uh, was blowing me away. So uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm glad she was part of John Con. And uh, I, I didn't, I didn't put two and two together that they did the, uh, the game. That's terrific. Yeah, they're they're major gamer. Both Sally and Vita. I'm not sure about Gab, but I know that the the two of them are, are serious tabletop gamers. So, yeah, I felt like that was the final element we needed to have a really yeah. balanced compendium. Agreed. No, it's a tremendous book, and again, uh, a donation of of ten dollars at 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 Crunchyroll. Correct. Gumroad. I'm Gum sorry. Say it again. Yes, and Gumroad. Gumroad, yes. Gumroad, there we go. Gumroad.com yeah. Gumroad slash insider art. That's where you go. And it's a wonderful cause as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? Honestly, it's been a, it's been a, uh, really a, a pleasure talking about this book and making people aware of it the last few months. And no, you know, Shell, seriously, and the same thing with um, the the nine uh, panel grid. Uh, okay, it, amateur. Okay, amateur, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great artistic challenge. And that's... Mm -hmm. It truly, I mean, beyond beyond your eye for for interesting stories and putting together young and old creators as you did at Black Crown in particular. That's what Chris and I were talking about. And music, right? Yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. Art and alchemy, com comics and chaos. John, I feel like my dad is like flooding your bank account. You're always so kind to me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the support, the enthusiasm. Buddy, like I said, I appreciate your eye, and I, I thank you for well, who's that. I, I had a when I when I was experiencing technical difficulties, I was crying into my Joe Strummer pillow. And I had to bring it to show that the other Clash fan. This is this is just to say props to anyone who follows my musical taste. Do not follow my husband's. <laughs> mine. Sorry, me and Philip will be uh, similar. <laughs> Our Rod McEwen albums and sighing. It's all right. That's fine. That's fair. He's a good man. So, He's Chris, uh, any any other prizes, Chris, that you can tell us about as far as uh, what we should look for on the racks? Um, we're not going to divulge anything yet, but we will say to keep an eye out for the Insider Art Kickstarter that will be launching soon because that'll be kind of you know um, a gateway to maybe doing some more projects together. Right, Shelley? Yeah, absolutely. I think the great thing about Kickstarter is that this will give us a chance to not only continue to get this book into, into the hands of people who may have missed it, you know, even though it's available digitally, but 
the thing that's so great about Kickstarter is we'll be able to actually pay the contributors a little something. Yeah. They were all so generous and it's hard working for free. You know, we all donated our time, but everybody's got to make a living, especially now. It's a, it's a pretty weird environment. So if you can just keep your eyes peeled and even if you can't back us on Kickstarter, please just maybe share the information or um, even on, on Gumroad. One thing that's really interesting is on Gumroad, you can actually buy a digital copy for someone else. So oh, that's I know, great. I yep. know some people have gifted it for their friends' kids or for their nieces and nephews or their grandma. John, you never know who might enjoy this. So No, actually, now that you mention it, that's a great idea. And I, I think maybe to uh, to gift a couple of my uh, my younger cousins who have children and stuff, I think that would be very nice. That That's terrific. And, They're the right and, age. And, and I also think that it's really fair to say, like, in the age that we're living in where there is so much uh, uncertainty in the world, this is a way to be kind. And I just want to stress that again. I mean, it was something that I wanted to do because I felt helpless. And it really helped me channel my own anxiety about what was going on in the world. When I reached out on the Facebook comic book women's group, there were a number of people like Chris who immediately just signed on board. And she has a day job. A lot of other people just have been working straight through. And so I'm glad to be able to thank everyone yet again, anyone who's donated, who's picked up insider art on Gumroad, um, who has maybe purchased something on the eBay channel, um, who has just shared our information. We also have a Twitter account that Mariah handles at Project Insider. We've got an Instagram page. We've got a Facebook page. Anything you can do to help us spread the word. We really think this initiative is, is terrific and strong and we wanna boast about it because we wanna to continue to earn money for female and non-binary retailers. They were hit hard. We've got 28 of them who are getting money every other week and we've only raised a little bit over five grand. I know we can do better, so. Okay, well, yeah. My, I mean final, my final note is please help us support other people in comics who are not as visible. Agreed, it's a, it's a very uncertain time right now with the market and um, even when things normalize, God only knows what that's gonna look like. So mm -hmm. it is great. And, and again, Shell, this is the conversation that I've been having with creators. And, and Chris, did you, have you found this time tough to work through or has it, you know, energized your creativity and you've been able to, you oh, know, I mean, uh, obviously work with Shell on Insider Art, but other projects as well. Yeah, it's been tough actually. You know, I mean, I, like I said, I have a day job, but you know, I do a comic book for a video game company, so they haven't really been affected, okay. but it's been tough just kind of motivating myself to get through everything and every day log on to zoom multiple zoom calls and okay. try to be creative when everything is going on around you that's just bringing you down you know it's tough it really is and so struggling through it, but i have to say project insider was like a um it was like a light you know that came in um, and it was something fun to do. It was, you know, it brought people together and everyone worked in harmony and it, it was just a beautiful thing to be a part of. So it really was beneficial to me. And now she has a crush on Joe Strummer. <laughs> we <can blame> her. <laughs> Not. <laughs> well, the other thing that must be said when I announced the project, I, I said that under no uncertain terms that I have to have the garage because I wanted a garage band and it was specifically because of Garage Land, because of Joe Strummer and what Strummer represents. Because seriously, he doesn't take any shit and he gets things done. And I think he's one of the best uh, front men. I'm right? With you. right, Chris? I'm with you. That's right. I Chris agree. knows she'll be fired if she doesn't agree. <laughs> so, Strummer forever, insider art on Gumroad. Gumroad.com Gumroad slash insider art. Absolutely. That's the place to buy it. It's a great book for a great cause, absolutely. Uh, Chris, honestly, a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure. And hope we have another conversation down the road. Yeah. And uh, I'll see you in the, in the words of The Happenings, a terrible band that you would absolutely hate for years. <laughs> I will see you in September, Shelley Barr. See you then. Lightning round. Yeah, hell yes, absolutely. Uh, well, bring it, lady. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you very much. Uh, All right. Thank you.
And uh, yeah, everybody take care. Make sure you come back uh, for tomorrow. It's going to be a great day Sunday. More great panels from Mainframe Comic Con. Thank you for uh, joining us today in this panel and others as well. And uh, another full lineup tomorrow. Eight hours of a lot of uh, online convention fun from Mainframe Comic Con. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great night. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.